Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace to the rest of you. Black heart sign, I'm black in again. More important than the like or subscribe button is the share button. Or you merely sharing it by your tongue to someone else's ear. Not in any erotic way, of course. Because the message is more important than the messenger and I don't want you to make me famous. I want the message to become famous. That said, let me get right into it. You saw the title. You know what's happening. So let me go ahead and um, do you justice. First, in defense of Rashida Strober, I want to tell you, the audience, something. If you think that she didn't go through anything, I'm telling you, as someone who's seen trauma in other people, she's truly traumatized, and she admits it. Confessing to trauma is not always indicative of trauma, but usually it is. Now, confessing to trauma certainly is indicative that one believes they've been traumatized, even if they don't fit the clinical definition for traumatized. However, the confession is still a confession. That's not something you brag about. We know how we are as a community, and that is exactly why it is I believe she went through it, because we know how we are as a community. We traumatize the F out of people. We're terrible to each other. We have almost no compassion for each other. As a man, honestly, if you really want to know the truth, I think that there are times we act so bad towards each other that we deserve to be enslaved for about a year, re-enslaved. Then I come back to my senses and I say, we don't need that. We just need a little ass whooping. But a lot of some of you want to act like Rashida ain't been through nothing. She making all of it up. No, nigga, Rashida been through some stuff. You just don't want to admit it because you don't want to think that maybe you had something to do with her trauma. So a lot of you... Um, a lot of you ignorant ass, jigaboo, Tarzan chasing ass niggas want to act like she didn't go through nothing because you know damn well you're part of the problem. And you don't want to face your own guilt if you can even feel guilt. Now that's for those of you who, who will say that she's making it up. Some of you say, well, she went through it, but get over it. Well, it's not that easy. Does she need help? Yes. Just get over it? No, you get over it with help. But you got to understand that some of you niggas are traumatized too by certain things that happened. And you carrying on some ignorant nigger culture worse than what she's doing. She's trying to confront a problem. Some of you niggas may not be willing to carry the problem on anymore, but you ain't going to stop it from affecting your children. So, if you niggas think that she didn't go through anything... Man, fuck the shuck up. You dumb as hell. She's traumatized. If you think that she didn't go through anything in adulthood, that's why I'm with you. Maybe, maybe not. I doubt it, though. Because in adulthood, we tend to outgrow the colorism. We just move on to making fun of people for something else. Actually, in adulthood, in adulthood, we, we move on to making fun of light-skinned people and not dark-skinned people. I've seen that myself, but it's usually jokes anyway, and that's not, that's not really offensive. I mean, there was a guy who came up to me. He looked, looked, looked like an Indian with kind of curly hair, calling me Elion Gonzalez. I looked back at him, and I said, well, damn, Gandhi. You know, it was, it was, these, were, these were the kind of jokes we had. It was okay. My cousin said, that was funny, Elion. And I was like, all right, Omar Bashir, looking like the president of Sudan. No, it was jokes. But the point is, it was only cool to joke on light-skinned people. So, in all honesty, that's what we really had to face. Now, that being said, um, you may say that she's not going through it now, and you think she's talking about going through colorism now, today, in adulthood, and you disagree, and I'm with you on that. I find it hard to believe that she would still face it now in adulthood, but that does mean she's not facing trauma for what she went through in her childhood and her teenage years, and that is where you are insensitive niggas. Talking about some, she made it all up. No, what time frame are you talking about? Childhood, teenage years? No, I'm sure she did not. In adulthood, if she said she's been through it in adulthood, she probably isn't making it up even then, but she just thinks that it's due to colorism when it's not. Because if you know that you went through something for a particular reason, later on when you go through the same thing, you don't know that it's not for that reason anymore. 
unless someone pulls you off to the side and shows you the evidence and tells you. Now, that being said, Rashida, this is where I got a bone to pick with you. I'm glad you're confronting colorism as it is, but you got to understand the colorism is not an adulthood phenomena for the most part. It is, and it's certainly not an adult black male phenomena. Believe it or not, it is not. We're not allowed to do this. We don't tolerate this from each other. It's just not allowed. A man can have an individual preference. Even then, that can be questionable. But men, adult men, do not tolerate outright colorism from each other. We, just, we don't tolerate it. You mistreat someone because they're dark or because they're light. We don't tolerate that. Actually, if someone mistreats someone for being light-skinned, they can get away with that a little bit more easily, but even then, they probably can't. Men don't tolerate that from each other. They just don't do it. Jokes, yes. Real discrimination, no. Uh -uh. Now, Shannon Sharp admitted that he had a coach who told him don't recruit light-skinned players. They're not tough. I don't know if the, the coach who told him that was white or black. I'm not sure. Probably black. But even then, you notice Shannon did not tell anybody about this until now. Notice that. Realize that. Stephen Curry is going through a bit of colorism, that reverse colorism, if you want to call it that. He's going through that backlash colorism. Well... That's somewhat tolerated, but if Stephen Curry or other players like him were colorist against darker players like LeBron, that would not be tolerated even by men. So no, no, no. Rashida, you act like it doesn't go both ways, and that's your flaw. It goes both ways. And this is why I cannot defend you. You said colorism doesn't go both ways, and it doesn't hit the men as hard as it hits the women. Well, you ain't been a black man with light skin and straight hair. So you don't know. You would not know. You'd have to ask one of them. And I'm telling you, yeah, it does. You got physically victimized. Well, you know, light skin guys with straight hair can also be physically victimized. Unless, of course, they're 6'2 and very muscle bound. But if, if that's not the case, they're going to catch it. It's real. Somebody's going to do something to them. They're going to get tested in ways other brothers ain't tested. That's real. It's been like that for a while. Even in Louisiana, matter of fact, especially in Louisiana, that was actually one of the worst areas to go through it. When I moved from Louisiana to Atlanta, I didn't go through it again. I was never tested again by men in Atlanta. There was one case about which I'm not really sure. But in all honesty, there's evidence that it wasn't about color. It was just about the cap I was wearing. There's evidence for that. Now, when I moved away, let me tell you this, Rashida, when I moved away to Atlanta, the colorism started right back up afresh and anew from black women, not from brothers. Mm-mm. No. At this point, at that point, brothers didn't really take issue with it. No, sisters did. They took issue with it. Light-skinned sisters, dark-skinned sisters, hell, attractive sisters in general took issue with it. That's all it was. And so you're telling me it doesn't go both ways. And if you especially want to limit it to being selected by the opposite gender in adulthood, then yes, black women go through it if they're very dark and their hair is coarse. Black men go through it if they're very pale, especially if their hair is very loose. I don't blame you for your campaign. I don't, but Rashida, you gotta understand something. You gotta realize that it does go both ways. I think you know it and just didn't, you either didn't care or you didn't want to admit it. It does go both ways. And I'm gonna tell you how you can find out, Rashida. You set up here and weaponize your boyfriend's complexion against people who are pissed off by it. If you think it'll piss someone off, you we you'll use his complexion and weaponize it. And you said that's what you're doing. But you don't want him doing that with your complexion. You said this in the interview with O'Shea. You sat there and confessed to this. That is a very intense one-sided militancy. And this is how I, this is one of the reasons for which I believe you were truly traumatized. Because you sat up here and said, I can do it, but he can't. 
You sat up here and said that. So you really did go through something that drove you to this point. That I can believe. But let me tell you this too, though. As you were going through this, as you sat up here and then you said this to O'Shea, you also said something else. Rashida, you sat up here and you said that your boyfriend went through walls and barriers that you had up around yourself for him to get to the inner you. He put up with that to get to you. Rashida, why don't you ask your light-skinned boyfriend what he went through? Ask him about that. Ask him if I'm telling the truth or if I'm not telling the truth. When you ask him about that, ask yourself another question, much deeper than that. Ask him, listen to his answers. But Rashida, ask yourself if he, because of whatever he went through, had the same walls and barriers up around him that you had around yourself, would you have been willing to go through them to get to him? You've already said you wouldn't because you said you don't make any effort to go after a man. You've already said it. Well, goddamn, Rashida. One of the reasons that you think that you're so unselected is actually because you don't make any of the first approaches. And that has more to do with the laws in the current situation uh, than it does to do with colorism, believe it or not. You sat up and said that, you know, light-skinned women get approached when dark-skinned women don't. Well, in childhood, maybe so. Maybe, yeah. Teenage years, maybe so. But let me tell you this. Now, in adulthood, nobody gets approached. Men are increasingly not approaching women because, especially... Uh, Western women, black or white, especially because it can lead to trouble. Western women don't just say, I'm not interested. Western women have to say, why would you even ask me that? Hell no. Why would I go with you? Increasingly, that's the case because they get points for it. Social points between their peers. And you're looking for brothers to go around making approaches. What are you, nuts? It's on a decrease, not the increase. Besides, making approaches has a 13% success rate. That's unacceptable. So no, brothers are sitting back and saying, I'm the prize, I'll make the money. She wants me, she can come after me. Because I know that there's somebody else that's fucked up for free. I'm not going to make an effort. Well, at the end of the day, um, the fact that he went through this and you didn't shows you the socialization that men are fighting against anyway. And really, Rashida, you've talked a lot about the effects of colorism on um, men's selection of women. And I'm going to tell you this. You have completely ignored women's selection of men. Completely. And you have ignored it um, and even in the Western context, and there's no reason, you need to understand that there's absolutely no reason in a Western context for men to approach women anymore. There's no reason except maybe a quick nut. And, you know, for all of that, you could just pay somebody to, you can, one of two things a guy can do, he can pay for the sex or he can pay her to fuck the shuck up afterwards and not bother him. One of the two. But at the end of the day, that's what's going on right now. That's what we're being reduced to because of the way things are in this Western world. So while you're sitting up here and you're saying that you know all the men got to approach you, which is fine, it's up to you, you're also telling on yourself, you're saying that you put this man through extra stuff to get to you that you would have never gone through to get to a man even if you liked him. I want men to pay attention to that because regardless of complexion, Actually, this is something that men need to learn to stop doing. Men need to start, especially black men, need to start sitting back and saying, what, how much would she be willing to do to come for me or to, or to get my attention? Nothing. Well, God damn it, what the hell does she bring to the table then to make up for that? Nothing. Then we're done. I'm not making any approaches to her. I'm not even trying this. They got women in other parts of the world that will cooperate and look at me with lust in their eyes. So, truth be told, Rashida, you not only proved the argument, uh, I mean, yeah, you not only gave evidence against the argument that you had that colorism only goes one way, 
but you also sat up here and opened the door to the discussion as to why men should stop trying with Western women in general, white, black, light, dark, or anything in between. So Rashida, next time, maybe you'll ask somebody before you just start mouthing off and saying that it only goes one way in comparing us to white folks. I can tell you now, I ain't a white boy. I'm not an extension of white people. And I'm not sitting up here doing stuff to darker skinned folks and not getting a backlash for it. No, I'm not doing anything to anybody else. And I did get a backlash for it before. I was lucky I came out untraumatized. But I, had to, uh, I did come out with health issues that affected intimacy. But trust issues, not health. That's all right. I came out with trust issues that affected intimacy. So there's some side effects even for me. I mean, when I was a toddler, there was a backlash. I didn't know it at the time, but there was a backlash. I was a toddler. I went through some stuff I can no longer remember, but I can remember the nightmare that result, I mean, the, the actual dream nightmare that resulted from it in my sleep. I can still recall that. I can recall a fear that I had. I didn't have a fear of sisters. I had a fear of sisters who raised their voice. If I didn't know why they were angry, why? Well, because I, I'd been fussed at for stuff I didn't do as young as, uh, as young as when I was a toddler. Now, one fear that that has left me with, like a paranoia, is left me with the paranoia of being blamed for things I didn't do. Because that happened, that continued on, uh, yeah, that continued on through all the way up into my mid-twenties. Actually, that continued on up until I got married for the first time. This being blamed for stuff you didn't do. Yeah, that's cold-blooded, isn't it? So we've both been through some stuff. The difference is I'm not sitting up here saying you didn't go through anything. I just don't think that people were acting that way based on colorism in adulthood. That's all. I doubt it. And you sit up here saying that on the opposite end of the spectrum, we didn't go through nothing. No, 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 no. That's not the case. Now, Ms. Strober... I do want you to continue with your activism. But what I want you to do is I want you to go after these parents and I want you to tell these parents who have probably outgrown colorism, make sure your kids don't have to grow through it. We've outgrown it, but, but we had to grow through it. You had to grow and go through it. I had to grow and go through it. But we make sure that your kids don't even have to grow or go through it. That's what we need to be telling them in these plays. Not you know, cut out the colorism. Adults are looking at you like, but okay, it happens in the community, but I'm not doing this. So I don't know who is. No, 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 no. You're going to have to start going after sisters. You're going to have to focus on the women, Ms. Strobe, and tell them, don't you say this to your sons and don't say this to your daughters. And if you know someone, most of you ain't doing it, but if you know someone who is, they're not here at this play. So go tell them this. That's what you got to tell them, Ms. Strobe, if you really want to confront this issue. And I want you to confront it. I want you to be successful in that. It does exist. But you don't fully understand it yourself if you're saying the stuff you're saying. And that's going to be your biggest hindrance. You haven't fully understood the scope of it. So like any other disease, you have to know who it affects, how it affects them, how the immune system responds to it, how the body reacts and then you also need to understand what age groups, what demographics are most likely to be affected. You haven't done this yet. When you do, that's when you will find yourself effective in actually confronting it. The first thing you need, you need to understand is that common sense is like your program. It's like deodorant, which is like your program. The ones who need it the most don't use it. So the ones who need your message the most aren't going to your place. That means you've got to encourage your, your audience to go out there and tell their people. And to do that, you need to understand that, God damn it, it does go both ways. Because you ain't going to be effective if you're going to sit up here and you're going to treat one thing, but you ain't gonna, you're not going to treat the immune system's reaction to it. That's the truth of the matter. I hope this has been a benefit. Salam alaikum. Blackheart, sign a blackout.